So I took off the wheel from the outfeed table, put more WD-40 on it, and then started gently tapping. And I was not really hitting it hard at all because I didn't want to break anything, and I finally got it to work. Yay! Well, I'm glad that came apart. I, this is the wheel on the outfeed side, and it was all jammed up. This little wheel that has the plastic on the coating on was cranked in too tight, and there was a bunch of gunk in there that had locked it in. And there's gunk underneath, too. But, you know, that's a 110-year-old thing. I don't know when that, or if this was taken apart since it was new. But the pieces would not come out. This is what also had the missing bolt. So I need to get another one of these created. And hopefully I have someone at work who has a lathe and says, yeah, that sounds like fun. So thank you, Tom. Uh, once I get all the rest of the stuff figured out, I will do the measurements and we will see how this goes. But yeah, these are these are cool bolts. Unfortunately, with a half inch head and th uh, was it three eighths threading, these don't exist anymore. You can't buy them. They have set screws that have a three eighths inch head and three eighths inch threads, but they don't have the half inch. So, oh well. The one interesting thing is this does have a key slot. I'm not sure what's up with that key that they have in there. There's two little prongs. That's new. I don't know what kind of thing that is. I'll have to make sure not to lose that. Otherwise, I'll have to get a new one. <laughs> or find a new one. But one step closer to getting it all apart, outfeed table handle assembly is in pieces and now can get cleaned up. So that's good. And then I decided I wanted to take the head off since I'm going to send it in for getting redone as a Shelix. So I took... Turns out there's the big bolts on the back side that's three quarters of an inch, I believe. And once I took those out, it lifted up out. So that was good. Well, I got the head out, and that was attached in an interesting way. Interesting to me, at least. So I was all, I was wondering, is like, how do they manage to keep both of the bearings at the right distance? And it turns out there's this crossbar. So that actually attaches the bottom bearing housing on both sides. And then there's a, a big bolt that screws into the bearing housing from the back. That controls the vertical to some extent and sucks it up against the outfeed table side. There's a bolt underneath that helps do the fine adjust of the vertical. I think that says the fine adjust and this locks it in solid. And then on the other side there's just a bolt that also holds it from the side you can see the little spot where it goes. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, it's heavy, <laughs> like everything on this thing. That probably weighs 60 something. I don't know, I didn't measure it, but it's heavy. So yeah, this is the slot that these bolts with the. There's a spot on the plate that has a flat spot, and that's where the washers go. They have flat sides. And then that allows it to go up and down, but still hold it against in the outfeed table direction. And then you can see there's bolts that do the vertical fine adjust. And then these bolts do the sideways fine adjust to help hold it. But the, really th the real thing that locked it in was these big side bolts that bolt into the cross frame. So that's pretty cool. And you can also see the feet are bolted up on as well on each side. So that's kind of cool. I'm not sure what size. Those are probably 5 eighths. The biggest, well, it might be 3 quarters. Because these were 3 quarter inch bolts on the sides. This was a half inch. Or no, 3 9 sixteenths? This is smaller than a half inch. Actually, that may have been even smaller than that. It was uh, That may have been a 3 eighths. But in any case, it's just a, these were not tight. These were just snugged up and then that's where they went. These were tight, but not super tight. They were again, snugged up and then that's where it went. None of these things were cranked super tight, which is good because it's cast iron. You don't want to crack it. One other thing that I decided to do before I go in for lunch is 
see but since I'm probably going to be sending this head out to get a Shelix in I figured since I put all the oil in I should probably drain that out so it doesn't make quite as much of a mess and I noticed on the pulley side the oil is kind of a it's a very nice blackish brown grayish green color and it's mostly still clear on the other side so that definitely means that this side had way more dirt in it which I knew because when I took the bearing apart I could see the dirt was in that bearing and this one was mostly clean so yeah we'll just let this sit and drain and that way it'll be less of a mess to ship